Today we are talking about graphing rational expressions. You guys are going to be able to use different properties of rational functions to graph them. Now, if you notice, these are on the board two examples of pictures of rational expressions. They don't all look like this, okay? You're just being pretty much introduced to them right now. If you guys decide to go the pre-cal route, you'll actually deal with more uh, involved, more complex rational um, rational expressions. So to, you guys are going to take a few notes on the page that you just wrote your goal on, okay? You are going to take some notes on this page, okay? And then I'm going to give you another page that will go on the next page, okay? So you're going to take these by hand in your notebook right now, okay? So before we can actually get to graphing rational expressions and all the pieces that go into graphing these, we need to remember how to simplify, which by now I'm hoping you're okay with. Okay, so get down this example, and in your notebook, I want you to simplify this rational expression. So in your notebook, I want you to simplify this rational expression. Now what I want you to do is I want you to state your excluded values. State your excluded values. We also did this back when we were simplifying rational expressions. So remember, we were simplifying. We had to factor, right? How do I factor the denominator? Anyone? So we have x minus 1, x minus 3, okay? And then we had an x minus 3 on the top. Say what? I heard someone say it. The x minus 3s cancel out. Now, when you cancel out something and there's nothing left in the numerator, there is technically something. What is it? There's a 1. So this simplifies down to be 1 over x minus 1. So this is the simplified form for this rational expression. I also ask you to uh, state the excluded values. What are the excluded values for this one? It's not just 1, but it's also, it's also 3, okay? You want to start when you do your excluded values, you always base it off of your original before you, act, before you actually simplify, okay? So don't base it only off the simplified one. Do it off of the original one, okay? I want you to do another one. I have several in here, but I don't know. I want to do the good ones, okay? Do this one in your notes, okay? I want you to simplify this and also state the excluded values. All right, so for this one, how does the top factor? X plus 3, okay, what about the bottom? Anything cancel? No, so this is as simplified as it's going to be. What are my excluded values? 12 and, and negative 2, okay? These are our excluded values, which basically means that those values will make the denominator 0. Those values are not a part of our domain. Write the domain for this one in interval notation. How would you write the domain for this in interval notation? So going, going back now, some more, okay? Write the domain for this in interval notation. Thank you. So how would you represent the domain for this? And I asked for interval, not set, because it's a little bit more involved to write this, OK? Interval notation has what features? Parentheses, brackets, unions, infinities, okay? So how would I represent everything but negative 2 and 12? Wait, which one? Bracket or parenthesis? Parenthesis because it cannot be included. Yes. 
The U means that I'm connecting multiple pieces. So it's this part, negative infinity to negative two, as well as what is about to come after this. What comes after this? Two to 12, negative two to 12. Union, 12 to infinity. I basically have to include all real numbers except two, negative two, and positive 12. And that's how you are presenting an interval notation. Set is actually so much easier. That was easy, okay? A good little review right there. I'm reviewing these things because you're going to need all these skills to graph rational expressions. Being able to find the domain, right, well, write what the domain is, and you have to know it based off of what the excluded values are, and you find that through your simplifying process, okay? Let's do one more before we move forward, okay? Let's do this one. Simplify this one. So how does this one simplify? X plus 4, X minus 4 over X minus 2. Before I simplify this, what are my excluded values? 2 and negative 4. It's both of them, okay? Once I simplify, my simplified answer becomes, there we go. Okay, all these skills are important, and I'm going to tell you why. The simplified version of this rational expression is what you use to basically graph all the features of a rational, a rational function. Okay, what's left over, you can find your x-intercept, your y-intercept, there's vertical asymptotes in this bad boy, there's horizontal asymptotes in this bad boy, all this you can find from this very simplified form. And you want to use the simplified form. So that's a skill that you're definitely going to need. The excluded values, they help tell you where your domain is, and it also points out two specific features. So you're going to take down some definitions, okay? Because I'm pretty sure that when I said asymptotes, some of y'all faces look like, what is that? Okay? There's two different types. Actually, there's three, but we only cover two in Algebra 2. You'll learn a third one at your next level, okay? A vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote is a vertical line. Everybody knows what vertical lines look like, right? They run up and down. Okay, good. So it's basically a vertical line. It's an imaginary vertical line. I hate writing. A vertical line that the function, the curve of this rational expression will not cross or touch. It's an imaginary vertical line that the function will not cross or touch. And when you actually graph these, you do need to, to draw them in. They're represented by a, a, a dotted line, okay? You're able to find your vertical asymptote by setting your denominator equal to zero. And I'm talking about from the, the simplified form, okay? You can find that by setting your denominator equal to zero, the simplified denominator equal to zero. Yes? Mm -mm. You will want to... The, the question was, if there were two parentheses in the simplified form, would you distribute and then set equal to zero? And I was like, no, you leave it in this factor form, and then you'll set both pieces equal to zero. So in that situation, you would have two vertical asymptotes instead of one, okay? Will we do some of those? I don't know. We're going to see what kind of problems we got, okay? Now, a horizontal asymptote, similar concept. It's an imaginary line that runs horizontal. Okay. That the function could cross, it just kind of depends on the function. Okay. But it's an imaginary line that tells us, and this, these are my definitions, y'all. This is not like the textbook definition. Okay. That tells us 
our end behavior of the graph. And if you're like, Ms. Anderson, what do you mean in behavior? That basically means as X is getting really, really big, what's happening to the end of the graph? Is it approaching infinity? Is it approaching negative infinity? Is it approaching a particular number? The horizontal asymptote will tell us that, okay? What's happening to the ends of the graph, okay? So end behavior are basically the ends of the graph, okay? Last but not least, you have a hole, and it's literally an open circle. It's a space in your function on your graph, okay? It's a space in your function on your graph. And a hole occurs at your common factor. Now let me go a little bit in detail into what I mean by that. Those three problems that you did, you remember when some of those factors canceled out? At those common factors, there's a hole. So whenever you simplify, if you end up canceling anything out, that factor that you canceled out, that means there's a hole there, okay? So all these things that relate to this graph are found through the process of simplifying this rational expression, okay? So putting it all together at this picture that I do have for you that you can cut out and glue in and add to your notes, again, this is an example of a rational function okay. so I would trim this up add it in there so you have a visual to go along with it okay this part right here that gray dotted line that represents the what your vertical asymptote. The same one, except it runs the other way, that is your, your horizontal asymptote. Kind of hard to see. I definitely don't know what it looks like in your picture, but this right here, that's called a what? A hole. And even though it shows the curve going through it, okay, that is indeed a hole. And when you graph them yourself, I do want you to leave that open. Do not put part of the graph through it, okay? Some of y'all may try to make your hole really, really small, and it might be hard for me to see, okay? And then, of course, you have some of your common features. This point right here is called a what? It's called an x-intercept, so we'll also find these when we're graphing. And then, you, of course, if you have a y, you can't forget about, or x, you can't forget about your y-intercept. These blue curves, these blue curves are actually the, um, the rational function, okay? And yes, if you have one curve, you're going to have the other. These are called hyperboles. They're called hyperbola. They represent your actual function. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to graph these now. All right? We're going to graph these bad boys. So this sheet here is basically like a reference, all right? It basically tells you how to go about graphing these rational, um, these rational functions, okay? First thing you want to do is you always factor, okay? And to be honest, 
I will kind of hold off on the canceling first, because if I ask you to find the domain of this rational function, you always want it from the non-canceled out version, okay? Those excluded values. So just kind of be cautious. Look, read the full directions, okay? Because if it says find the domain, you want to do that before you start canceling things out, okay? So you factor first and cancel. Because remember, whatever cancels, there's a hole there, okay? So you want to find the X value of the hole. It's the X from the canceled factor. So that basically means that X plus 4 in this example that's worked out. You take that X plus 4 and you set it equal to 0, okay? When you set it equal to 0, you find the X value of your hole. You find the X value of your hole. Again, you get that by taking X plus 4, setting it equal to 0. That's how, where they got the negative 4 from. That's step 2. Step 3, you got to find the Y coordinate because it is a point. How do you find the Y coordinate of any graph? You plug it in. But what you do is you plug in that X value into the reduced function, what you get after you have canceled out, okay? So when I plug negative 4 into the X values, okay, I get 3. 3 is my Y coordinate. And I hate that I have to keep flipping back and forth, but if I try to put this whole page, it'll be super small, all right? So you find your hole and you plot it, literally an open circle. That's step 3. Oops, wrong way. Step four, find your vertical asymptote by finding the X values from the remaining factors in your denominator, a.k.a. say your denominator equal to zero from your reduced version, okay? So if I said X plus one equals zero, my vertical asymptote is X equals negative one, and it is an equation. Always make sure you have your X equals. So here is the vertical line for the vertical asymptote. As you see, it's dotted, okay? That's step four. Step five and six, find your x-intercept, find your y-intercept. You can find that by setting the numerator equal to zero. That's how you find your x-intercept. How you find your y-intercept, plugging in zero into the reduced function. It's all here, laid out, nice and neat, okay? And as you can see down here, your x-intercept was five, zero, because it's a point. And then when you plug in zero into your reduced function, you get zero, negative five. And you plot those. Boom, boom. So far so good? Okay. After that, you want to determine your end behavior. And you determine that by figuring out what your horizontal asymptote is. As Is X bigger in the numerator or the denominator? Okay? You want to look at this. Because here are some examples. Okay? If... They are equal to each other. Look at the X in the numerator. Look at the X in the denominator. Okay? If they're equal, it is always the coefficients that are out front. One divided by one is one. Look at this one. You have a 2X on the top and an X on the bottom. They're the same type of X. It's X to the first power, X to the first power. So you divide them. 2 over 1, Y equals 2. Are you following me here? If they're equal, like this one is, it's the coefficients in front, so that's going to be one half. But if the denominator is bigger, you see this? The denominator is bigger than the numerator. It's always y equals zero. These right here represent your horizontal asymptote, which means as x is getting bigger or as x is getting smaller, going to positive infinity or negative infinity, your graph is basically going to approach these horizontal asymptotes. Yes? You've got to look at the degree of the, of the x's. Mm -hmm. You look at the degree. So here, you have x to the first and then x to the second for the last one, and they're not. The denominator's bigger. So because of that, it's always y equals zero. Yes? What if, what if the numerator is bigger? That is called an oblique asymptote, which you'll experience when you go to your next level. Okay? We just cover horizontals. We don't do obliques in this, this level. Okay? And the oblique asymptote is one that's slanted or one that's in the cubic shape. That's why it's for the next level. Okay? Yes? All right. 
So once you get all that information in there, as you can see, because they were both equal, you look at the coefficients in front. So the end behavior is y equals one. The horizontal asymptote occurs at y equals one. And basically all you do is you connect everything. And then there's your hyperbolas. There's your curve. It's a lot of steps. It is. Mm -hmm. So you find your x-intercept by setting your numerator equal to zero. So if I set x minus five equal to zero, my x-intercept occurs at five. And then my y-intercept, I just plug in zero. And then that's how I get negative five. Okay. Don't worry, we're going to do as many examples as we can from now until it's time to go to the pep rally. All right? So. Have this handy, because we're going to look at some examples. Have this handy, because we're going to look at some examples. I have a sheet. I have a sheet. So we're looking at this very first example, okay? Let's try it. We're going to try it together. It's not you try. It's a try it. I guess we're going to do it together. All right, and here are the steps from that, from that page, okay? First thing is we want to factor and cancel first, because I'm not asking you to find the domain here. So we need to factor the top, factor the bottom. How does the top factor? How does the bottom factor? Okay. And if you're like, gosh, they did that really fast. Well, they, they just might happen to be quick on, quick on the factor. No, they will work in the head, either one. Okay. But however long it takes you to factor, please make sure you do it correctly. Because if this is wrong, everything else is wrong. Okay. So we want to factor, and is there anything that we can cancel? The x minus 3s, okay? So we are left with this simplified fraction of x minus 2 over x plus 3. Now let's go to step 2. It says to find the x value of the whole. And remember, the whole comes from the canceled out factor. So we are going to take the canceled out factor of x minus 3 and set it equal to 0. What is the x coordinate of the whole? 3. We're done with step 2. Then you're going to have. So the question is what if you have more than one canceled out value? Then that just means you're going to have multiple holes, which can happen. Okay? which means that you'll have to do steps two and three however many times for the number of factors you canceled out, okay? Because a whole is a point, and so you got to find that point, all right? So we found the x coordinate of the whole. Now we have to find the y coordinate of the whole by plugging in the x value into the reduced function. So if I plug in three into the reduced function, that's three minus two over three plus three. It's one over six. So I have a hole that occurs at the point 3, 1 over 6. Questions on how we found the hole? Into the reduced fraction. If we plug it back into the original, we're going to end up getting 0 over 0, which we don't want. So we, all, we want to use the reduced one. So I'm going to plot this hole. 3, 1, 6. Now, I'm not expecting you to go exactly to where 1, 6 is, but I do expect this hole to be in between 0 and 1. Okay? So, 0, 1, 6. There's my hole. So far, so good? Question. Okay, so we have to graph this hole at 3, 1, one 6. And 1, 6 is a number that's in between 0 and 1. Now, I'm not expecting you to like be like, okay, it got to be right at 1, 6. But I do expect it to be in between 0 and 1 because that's where 1, 6 lies. So then I just plot the point. I went over 3, up 1, 6, and plot the, plot the whole. Okay. All right. Let's find the vertical asymptote. <laughs> the vertical asymptote is found by finding the x values from the remaining denominator. I don't like this wording, because all I got, you're really just trying to say set the denominator equal to zero. 
That's really all it's saying. So take your denominator and set it equal to zero. X equals negative three. So my vertical asymptote occurs at X equals negative three. Now it is vertical. Vertical runs up and down and it is a dotted line. So I go to negative three, draw a dotted line, and there's my vertical asymptote. Questions? Not 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 the x at not the x intercept or the y intercept. Let's find the x intercept though. I can find my x intercept from the remaining factors of the numerator. That is just the way to say set the numerator equal to zero. Okay? When I set my numerator equal to zero, what do I get? Two. So I have an x intercept at two zero. So I'm going to put a point at 2, 0. That's my x-intercept. Let's find my y-intercept. I have to plug 0 into the reduced function. Plug it into x. Okay? So that's going to be 0 minus 2 over zero plus three, what does that become? Negative two thirds. My y-intercept is at zero, negative two thirds. Now, do I expect you to go to negative two thirds exactly? No, but I am expecting you to be in between zero and negative one, okay? We're almost there, guys. Almost there. Last thing is to find my end behavior, a.k.a. my horizontal asymptote. Remember, with your horizontal asymptote, you look at the degree of the numerator and compare it with the degree of the denominator. What's the degree of the numerator? What's the degree of the denominator? So because they are equal, you look at the coefficients in front of those x values. It's a 1 and a one. So you divide them. What is it? And horizontal asymptotes are always written as y equals whatever the number is. So I'm going to have a horizontal line intersecting the y-axis at one. And I know my graph looks like that I'm crossing over my hole. It's just because my pen is thick. But your horizontal asymptote should not be touching that hole that you drew, okay? So now that I have all those pieces, all that information, I can now graph my hyperbola on my graph, okay? And I need to have my two branches. One branch needs to go through my x-intercept, y-intercept, and my hole, even though I'm really not going to go through my hole. And this is definitely not going to be the prettiest curve. But the thing is, is that it ha is restricted between the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. So it's going to curve in a fashion that's going to basically approach my horizontal asymptote and my vertical, but never cross or touch. So what does this look like? Oops, wanted to change the color. It could, but oh my gosh. This is not one of those cases where it's going to cross. You're more likely to cross in a um, two vertical asymptote situation or in a um, or in a situation when your function is a little bit going to be a little bit more funky. Yes. Say again. It goes yes. It goes through the y and the x-intercept because remember those are points on the function. Now. I did my best to try to not draw my curve through my hole because that is a hole. There's, there's nothing there. So try not to draw your, your curve through the hole. 
Now realize, if there's one branch, there's another one, okay? The other one, at least the ones that you guys are gonna do, are always diagonally from the one curve that you drew. So since this one's in the bottom right, the other one's gonna be in the top left. And if you really wanna be specific, if you really wanna be specific about where this curve is, you can plug in any one of these points to the left of the vertical asymptote into your reduced function to get a specific curve. But to be honest, as long as you have in the right general area approaching the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote, then I'm good, okay? Because you just did all this work, okay? But you do need to have another curve, okay? They're, they come they come as a pair. You just can't have one without the other, okay? And they're always diagonally from each other. Yes. All right, let's look at number two. This is number two that's on that sheet. Factor first. Can I factor the top? No. Can I factor the bottom? No. So that's one less thing I have to do. This is the reduced fraction. So be, if nothing cancels out, that means there are no holes. Okay? So under the line that says holes, you just put none. Because if nothing cancels out, I don't have any holes. Okay? Yes. All right, so um, so I, had, I don't even have to do steps two or three because I have no hole. But I do have a vertical asymptote, and I find that by setting the denominator equal to zero. So when I set it equal to zero, x equals two. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. And I'm going to draw that in with a vertical dotted line. Crud, you're right. What? Sorry, not negative two, positive two. Make sure you guys do it at positive two. How do I find my x-intercept? The numerator. Got to set that equal to zero. zero. When I do that, I'll give me 3x equals 7. x equals 7, seven over 3. Seven. It's 2 and 1 third. So I expect you to be somewhere in between 2 and 3. Now I find my y-intercept by plugging in 0 into the reduced function. So when I plug 0 in, what does that leave me with? Teachers, please pardon the interruption. We're going to start dismissing. So 7 over 2 represents my y-intercept. And 7 over 2 is located where? 3.5? So a little bit over three, actually in between three and four, just like that, right? Okay. Now the last thing is to find my end behavior, a.k.a. my horizontal asymptote. Let's look. What's the degree on the top? One. What's the degree on the bottom? One. So that means I have to look at the coefficients of both of these. That's three over one, which equals so my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 3. So I have a horizontal line intersecting there. Now these ones are my favorite, OK? It can't touch the vertical asymptote. But remember, rational functions have two branches. So one branch is going to go through the y-intercept. The other branch is going to go through the x-intercept. So this, I like these because now it's like, okay, do I have a second? Like, there's no question. They have to go through both of those. So 
I have one branch that's really close to the vertical, really close to the horizontal, going through my X intercept. And then the other one, got to go through my Y intercept. So really close to the vertical, really close to the horizontal, but never crossing or touching. And there we go. This is me checking in to see how you simplify. The top doesn't simplify, but the bottom sure enough did, or sorry, the top didn't factor, the, but the bottom did to be x plus 3, x minus 2. And since x plus 3 canceled out, you were left with 1 over x minus 2. Did you guys get that for the reduced fraction? So because there was a canceled out factor, that meant that there was a there was a hole. So you guys, uh, some of you guys probably already passed this point, but you make sure there's a hole there. I'll check in, in a little bit. Checking in on your progress. There is a hole. So to find the x coordinate of your hole, you have to set that canceled out factor equal to zero and solve it. So x equals negative three represents the x coordinate of my hole. And I have to plug that into the reduced fraction to find my y coordinate. So 1 over negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 1 fifth. Your whole occurs at negative 3 comma negative 1 fifth. Did you guys get that for your whole? Okay, keep going. I'll check back in in a little bit. My vertical asymptote is found by setting my denominator equal to zero. So by setting my denominator equal to zero, my vertical asymptote should have been x equals two. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. It's drawn in with the dotted line. Okay. I haven't gotten there yet. I was going to give y'all a second to keep going. You find your x-intercept by setting your numerator equal to zero. Well, my numerator is one. When I set that equal to zero, that's, that's nothing. One can't equal zero. So what does that mean? That means there's no x-intercept. And yes, that can happen. Just like having no y-intercept could happen too. That probably means there's an asymptote there. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's find my y-intercept. I have to plug in 0 for x. So my y-intercept is negative 1 half. So 0, negative 1 half. That is about right here, roughly. Last but not least, my horizontal asymptote, my end behavior. If I look and compare, what's the degree of my numerator? Teachers at this time, please dismiss cheerleader. What's the degree of my numerator? There's, there is none. There's no x up there. So that means that my degree of my numerator had to have been zero for it to not even exist. So if it's zero at the top, which it makes sense, what's anything to the zero power? Okay. No, it's one. It's one. So if this is zero and this is one. The degree of my denominator is bigger. And whenever the degree of the denominator is bigger, it's always y equals 0. And that's also why you don't have an x-intercept, because you got a horizontal asymptote there. Now I need to draw my hyperbolas, OK? My hyperbolas, one has to go through the hole and the y-intercept, so it's going to be in that bottom left corner. So it's going to be really close to the asymptotes, but not crossing or touching. And where's the other branch going to be? Diagonal, so it's going to be top right. And again, I'm not specific about where it actually has to lie, but it needs to be somewhere in that top right. And there's the graph there. All right, let's see how we did. Okay. Factor and cancel. X minus 4, X plus 2 over X plus 1, X plus 2. Yes? 
It does cancel the x plus 2, so I'm left with x minus 4 over x plus 1 as my simplified fraction. Because I have a canceled out factor, that means I have a, a whole. The x coordinate of the whole is negative 2. The x coordinate of the whole is found by setting that canceled out factor equal to 0. The y coordinate is found by plugging in that x value to the reduced fraction. What's negative 2, divided, my, negative two minus 4? Negative 6. What's negative 2 plus 1? What's negative 6 over negative 1? So I have a whole at negative 2, positive 6. I can find my vertical asymptote by setting my denominator of my reduced fraction equal to 0. What's my vertical asymptote? x equals negative 1. I can find my x-intercept by setting my numerator equal to 0. So my x-intercept is 4, 0. Make sure it's on your x-axis. My y-intercept, I plug in 0 into the reduced fraction. What does that become? So 0, comma, negative 4. I'm at negative 4 on my y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. Last thing is my horizontal asymptote. Are the degrees equal? Yes, they are. This one has a 1. This one has a 1. And because they're equal, I look at the coefficients. So y equals what? 1. This is another nice one because it has to go through your hole and it has to go through your intercepts. So one branch is going to go through my y-intercept and my x-intercept, getting close to the asymptotes but never crossing or touching. And the other one has to encompass the hole, and it is diagonal from the other branch. And there you go. Yes. No, there's not a possibility at this level for you to get a hole that's not diagonal from your other branch, okay? So look at your points when you plot them, okay? It should make sense. You should be able to draw hyperbolas, two of them, okay? If you're not, then something, something might happen, something might happen.